Hey everybody, coming at you from out in the wilderness, my happy place. <laughs> now, anybody that's ever watched my channel will know that I have done a lot of stuff in the past with rope beds. And you may remember, you may remember the tarp bunk shelter. Uh, but basically what I do is I, I like to, uh, for an elevated platform to get off the ground because, you know, in the summertime, the forest floor is littered with ants and spiders and scorpions and sometimes snakes. Well, I'll weave between trees a rope bed and then sometimes I'll cover it with a tarp. Well, I have come up with a new, all new, very, very cool device that is a, um, a it's like a cot or a bunk. I don't know, it's just hard to explain. I'm going to have to pull it out and show it to you. Then I'm going to show you a couple of different kind of ropes and how I weave them and how I do the elevated shelter. And then uh, for those of you that love tents and uh, hammocks, uh, I like them too, but we're going to get into the hows and whys of tents and hammocks versus these uh, improvised type shelters. So let's find a place over here. And I think I have picked out some trees that I know is perfect you need four trees for this so let's see if we can find see if we can walk to it you'll need four trees and in some areas it's almost impossible to find those four trees uh sometimes it's kind of hard for me look there's three trees i've done it with three trees before but four works perfect now i was here a week ago scouting out because i wanted to make sure and find a place ahead of time and this is the spot. There's one tree, another tree, another tree, and another tree. All right. And the cool thing is, is they're right over here near the creek. It's a small creek, but it's a water supply. All right, let's get this backpack off, and uh, I'll show you what's in it. All right, I got my backpack. And then I got another bag that's got a bunch of stuff in it that I may or may not need, but I'm going to show you. You know, I'm going to show you what all I have in here. Let me take some of this stuff out. Uh, let's see. I've got... Okay. Right here. Right here. All right, now. I brought a bunch of stuff to show you some things because I always try to teach you a little bit to make your uh, outdoorsy camping, bushcrafting experience better now this is the cot okay more about that in a minute that thing is handmade one of a kind and then we got a wooby blanket and let's see there's a, a saw in case i need it and then i'm wearing a machete in case i need that and then over here on the side pouch oh this is a hidden woodsman uh pack i don't know what this is that is oh that is some camo mesh like i said anybody that's been watching my videos they're definitely going to know what that is and then this is a basha tarp more about that in a little while now let's unzip this thing i'm gonna lay this here people that are used to my videos are used to me using this 3 8 camo rope got a couple of bug nut, nut nets i don't know if i'm gonna need both or just one pile all that up there now this is my rope bag okay every every self-proclaimed bushcrafter survivalist <laughs> should have a rope bag now this is the 3 8 rope you can see the size of that all right we're going to look in here i'm going to show you and all these mesh bags always have extra long paracord with a lock there's some clips or some smaller rope now see this rope right here i brought a brand new hank of it look this is a by atwood made in the usa quarter inch look 600 pounds of tensile strength look that's a hundred feet usually i get these hanks and i cut them into 100 feet and 25 feet and 25 feet and then i never cut them again now you can see right here i'm going to show you the difference right here Let's see, that's 25 feet and 25 feet. And these are 50 feet. Now, look at the difference. 50 feet of 3 eighths. 
compared to 50 feet, 50 feet a quarter. It's incredible. <laughs> so I'm going to start getting away from this and start getting more towards this. You know, the older I get, the more, the more, look, there's an ant right there already. I hate ants. That's another good reason to not sleep on the ground. In the winter, you can sleep in under a tarp. Now, of course, I got paracord. I always keep a few hanks of paracord. Now, this stuff here, this is eighth inch rope. I hate this. I've got a 50 foot and a 25 foot. And the reason I hate it is because I thought it could be a step between paracord and the quarter inch rope. But this stuff, you may as well just use paracord because it's almost the same diameter but nowhere near as strong. So if you're ever going to go buy anything, this is, this is ridiculous. It's a waste of money. Don't do it. Uh, this is perfect. Quarter inch. I love it for bushcraft chores. This is kind of overkill. The older I get, I kind of pay attention to weight. All right. Now, let's see. Where's the cot at? Okay, there is the tree cot. I'm going to show you what you do first to prepare to put this up. Okay? Now that we've had rope 101. <laughs> now, on these trees, the width of them doesn't really matter. The width has to be just a little bit wider than your body, or if it's going to be two people, you want it wide enough for two. All right? Now, you want to outstretch your hands just like this. And you want to be able to touch in between the trees just like this, at least. A little bit further would be okay, but if you get too far, the um, the the bed may sag. Okay, now uh, I'm gonna pull the bed out real quick and show you what it looks like, so that it'll make more sense how I'm gonna prepare this, the rope underpinning to help support it. Inside this bag, I have rolled up my cot. Now this just looks like a regular. I've rolled it up and I've got I've got a, ro a roll of three-eighths rope inside here. Now I'm going to stand back Now what this thing is it's double layer okay. It's a double layer olive drab canvas and the seams are folded in on the inside here. They're folded in and sewn. They're triple sewn. Now everywhere where there's a loop, if you can see this, look at that, right there, perfect. If you can see on camera, there's two inches of loop sticking out and there's about six inches, five to six inches inside that's sewn. And it's sewn on both sides. This side's a little bit neater. And like the corners, the corners are sewn here and here, and they're sewn together. And then the ends are sewn in a square. All right, and they're sewn all the way down. And rope, rope feeds through that. So now, instead of just supporting your body with a piece of cloth, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take rope first, and whatever the height of the bed's going to be, you're going to weave an X. That way, instead of having this 100% support your body, the rope is going to kind of help keep this from ripping. Even though this is double layer, you know, you, you, want, you want all the help you can get out of this. So the first thing we're going to do is weave us a X through the trees. And basically what we're doing is we're going to be using the trees as our bed post, literally, like four bed posts. I thought I saw something, heard something coming down. <laughs> All right, so let's weave that X between the trees. First off, let's get rid of these gloves. I like to wear these gloves for whenever I'm walking through the forest in case I'm wa waving away poison ivy or maybe, maybe if ticks land on me, they'll... See, if a tick lands on your skin, they'll stay and dig in. But if they land on something unnatural like cloth, oftentimes they'll just drop right off and lose interest. So, <clears throat> And it also helps with... Uh, Mosquito bites, so bug bites and things. All right, so what I do is now I, I, I've got this hanked. I've, I've showed how to hank this in several videos in the past. And what you want to do is about belt high probably. Now you can go up much higher. You can weave between the trees a ladder in case you want to be up real high. 
But what I usually do is I do what's called a taut line hitch around the outside and then inside and then you make a, a bite. Alright. And then I'll pull that tight. Just like that. Alright. And now I'm just going to weave between the four trees and X. So what I've done is at about belt high I have ran two ropes in the X and then two ropes in the X where it crosses over right in the middle. And if you got any rope left over, just go ahead and run it along to the next tree. That way maybe you can use that to tie off the back of your um, your uh, your uh, tarp roof. All right, so let's crank this thing up. Now, what you want to do next is you want to lay your tarp bunk on top of this row. Alright. Let's see. Now these trees ain't perfectly square. But you'll never find trees perfectly square. So what you want to do is you're going to lay this up here. Alright. Now this is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Couldn't ask for any better because it fits it fits in between the trees. And I'm fixing to show you that. All right, see, there's a little bit of gap between the trees, and then you'll come over here. See, there's about a hand's worth of gap between the trees. Now, that thing is six foot, and I'm five foot ten, so no problem there, all right? The actual cloth is the, I think this comes out to about six foot two, uh, no, the six foot four, yeah, because these are two inches. So what you want to do now is you want to weave rope through these loops and around the tree and back to the loops and through and around and back. Okay, that's kind of a tedious process, but I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like after it's all weaved into place. All right. all right, just a little sneak peek at what I'm doing. You can see here, I'm weaving the rope through these loops. Now, when you get to the corner here, okay, when you get to the corner, you want to weave through the loop just like that. Okay, you're through all these loops and then you want to go around the tree like that okay and then you want to go through the loops and that's what you want to do is you want to go around all four trees so that what you're going to be doing is you're going to be pulling it tight right here let's get you a little closer i wanted to show you this before i pulled it see how you got these loops here it's wrapped around the tree when you pull this it's going to stretch this cot tight around the tree so I'm gonna finish weaving it through and then I'll I'll get you pulled back turn back on around the tree through the loop All right, now if you can see, I've got everything laid out right here, and I'm going to give it a pull just to kind of show you how this works. All right, I got a piece of rope here, and I got rope here. Now watch when I pull it. See right here? It's pulling everything tight. Now I'm going to move the camera and give you an end angle so that you can see what it looks like when I pull them. You can see this old sloppy piece of canvas here. Let's give this thing a pull. Look at that. You get the idea? All this stuff stretched tight and it goes around the trees now. And then this kind of helps hold it in the center instead of just having all the stress on this rope. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I really tighten this thing up. Well, actually you want to give it kind of a pull and hold it together. And you want to kind of scoot this stuff around like this. 
you want to kind of center it up in between the trees as best as you can. Now, this looks like it's pretty centered up. All right, now I'll show you what I do next. I go into my kit here with my clips and things. And you take a, drop it. Take a, like a load bearing, I don't even know what you call this thing, screw link. It's one of them things, it'll hold a lot of weight. And you just tie one end of the rope and put the other end of the rope and give it a pull. So what we have here is on this end, you tie this end in the loop. And then this other end, you're going to give it a pull. All right. That right there is what's going to tighten it up. Now I'm just going to tighten this up a little bit. I'm going to wrap it around this tree over here. Now, I've got this secured very gently, very loosely around this tree. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the cotter on them. Like, I need to come towards this tree a little. So I'm just going to kind of slide all the loops over a little bit. Kind of like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use good old foot power. <laughs> and I'm going to grab this and put my foot against the tree and give it a tug. Good old foot power. There we go. That ought to get it. All right, so now comes the moment of truth. <laughs> Does it rip? Do I hit the ground? Or do I lay on it and go into a nice, cozy, comfy arch. Oh. <laughs> Success! Oh, it's perfect. And it's got that nice dish to it. And then I've got these ropes here on the sides. This is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. I love this. This is wonderful. Let's see if I can get out of it. Let's get out the other side. All right. That's awesome. It worked. Let's get one more view of that, and then I'll show you about the roof and the bug net. Let's lay with my head at this end this time and see. Nice and cozy. Ah. Now I think if you really like your camp mate, or if your camp mate don't stink, two people could spoon in there. <laughs> Or you could just make it wider and put more rope underneath. It's kind of limitless. Make it as big as you want and make it as many loops as you want. So, all right. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to weave another barrier up head high for hanging the roof and the boat. What I did is I weaved a ridge line higher than the one in the back. Okay. And one thing you can do is you can go from the on the inside you can go from the top back and forth weaving to help support it if you think a real heavy rain is going to be coming but there's no rain expected for like the next three days so i'm just going to throw a tarp over it if it has a dip in it that ain't the end of the world but like i was saying you can uh you can go from this line let's see if you can see 
Yeah. This line right here, all the way up to this line, you can weave back and forth with paracord to kind of help support it. All right, but I'm just gonna, like I said, oh no, wait a minute, I'm gonna put the bug net up first is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you that. And then I'll throw the tarp roof over it. And if you got any excessive uh, cordage, just weave it across the back right there. That way you can have a place to hang a canteen or a light or whatever in the back of your shelter. So what I use, you can buy different bug nets. And I thought about maybe using some camo mesh in the future. But what I use is a military bug net that's called an insect bar. All right, now normally these things, they have tie outs on them. So what I do is I usually just tie them out up here. I'll tie them up and stretch them around. Now I usually have to carry two. I'll just kind of stretch them around and then if anything sags I'll take some clips and I'll clip them on. All right, I got you off the tripod because we're going to walk around this thing. Now, it don't matter how messy this is, but you use what tie outs that you can. And even if you, sometimes I'll use clips up here because I fold it over and clip it. Now, the thing about bugs gnats, flies, mosquitoes, is they like to fly around and fly straight into things. They don't like to fly down and under and up. But you don't want this touching the ground. You want it lower than your bed, but you don't want it touching the ground because if it touches the ground, ants will get on it and crawl up it. But then just whatever messy fashion you can, I see another thing that I've noticed is a lot of times if uh, the wind's blowing and it's raining, this ain't waterproof, but it will deflect some of the rain. And the fact that this tarp, let me go over inside, the fact that this tarp has a gap in it there is if the rain hits that, it won't come in, it'll drip down. Now the back side is a different story. I've got it looped in like that. Alright. But... You can throw a woobie in there, a blanket. I'll show you that in a minute. And so you've got this. I say once you set this thing up, if you're on private property, and I say there's a problem right there. See that big gap? I need to pull these together and clip them with a clip. I'll do that in a minute. But if you got like, say, if you got this on like private property, you could just set this thing up and just leave it for like a month and come back and camp at it. All right, I'm gonna fix that corner there. All right, before I got a roof on, let's put in a Wooby. Now Wooby has got these little tie-offs. You could actually use it to tie this plate, this thing off. That's what I like. See, I can I can reach up under this net right here. Let's see. All right. Home sweet home. Look at that. And see now if I get cold at night. I can just pull this over on me. All right, I got you off the tripod again. And I'm gonna show you how you get in. 
All you gotta do is lift this up. I can't see. Lift this up. And then we'll just go inside. It's just like a big old, <laughs> big old baby crib. <laughs> nice and comfy. And see, so you're gonna have your wall right here. And see, so now we just gotta put the roof up. But these improvised shelters like this, they are a lot of fun, okay? And another thing too is if you're going to be camping somewhere where the ground is real hilly and rocky and there's just there's just absolutely no way that you could have a nice flat spot for a tent or a tarp. And then like I say, during the summertime, you've got scorpions, spiders, snakes, ticks, ants. Uh, if you're near a creek, you may wake up, if you're in a tent, you may wake up two or three inches of water on the ground. With this, you could have two feet of water on the ground and it wouldn't matter. You could just wait, wait the storm out. Now this is a basha tarp. B-A-S-H-A. -A. What BASHA stands for is British Army Special Hotel Accommodations. <laughs> now, us Americans, we're used to woodland camo. This is called DPM. Disruptive Pattern Material. That's their camo pattern. And it's pretty cool. So, all you do with this is just take this and just throw it over the top and tie it down. All right, you see the big giant droop in the tarp? Before you tie off each end, you can take and lay sticks up there and it'll help support the roof. See, now that what that's going to do is that even though I'm going to tie it off and stretch it tight, that gives a little extra support for the roof. So see, there's your roof. Now, these big dips right here, you can take a stick and run a stick a long ways through it, or you can stretch it even tighter. If you've got stakes, you can stretch this all the way down to the ground. So, with a little bit of tweaking, that roof will be ready for some rain. All right, so we got the roof on a stretch pretty tight. Now let's just crawl inside and see if it tears the roof loose. All right, no problem there. Now you want to be sure and do all this kind of stuff. Crawl in, crawl out a couple of times before it gets dark. And then walk around and look, make sure everything's good. I'm going to see if I can put the camera to where you can see through the mesh on the end as I get in. Let's crawl in from this end. Can't hardly see me in here, can you? There you go. Nice and cozy. See if I can get you from this kind of view. 
You just lift this up, lift up the mosquito net, there's your bed. Now let me see if I can put you, see if I can put you down here on the end. I got the net here lifted up out and away from me. Just kind of situate this right here a little bit. Oh, I forgot to tie it off. I need to tie the wood be off so it doesn't move around. I probably need to take this machete off too. All right. Mm, here we go. I got that net. Oh, that net's in the way. Let me, uh, hold on. <laughs> Let me get the camera off the stand. Ah, see, so you can look, see what I'm seeing. Alright, there you go. Yeah, I need to tie this off. See this gap here? This thing needs to be tied off on that rope right there. I need to tie that off because there's a gap there. See that? And it, that's starting to bunch up on the end. But anyway. Now there's another idea. Look at that. There's already a bug on the outside of the net. Let's take a look. Now as with any improvised shelter, there's things you're going to have to do. Little edges you're going to have to seal up. But now the reason that you can't make all this thing in one big giant component is because all trees are spaced different. All right, all trees are spaced different. Uh, this is kind of similar, I guess. It's a mixture between a bridge hammock and a bunk bed or a cot. Because you know, a cot will stretch from four wooden legs but uh, anyway, this it's it's very extremely comfortable, and the cool thing is, is you got a breeze going through there through the bug net, but the backside doesn't, because the backside's got a tarp wall. But anyway, I hear bugs flying around all around outside me. The thing is, is they're going to have to really work to get in here. I've got a few gaps, and uh, this gap here is not good. <sighs> Let me <laughs> try to scoop down. Let's see now. Now see that will be right there. All I got to do is I got to tie it off to where that net is, and it'll work. Or use some clips. This end here, I may just I may clip that on right there. But yeah. The other end, there ain't no gap. The other end, the net fit a little bit better. You know, actually, yeah, that's what I could do too. The other end, the net is hanging down real low so I can connect the net underneath. And on this end, I'll tie the wooby off. And I could probably connect the net underneath it too if I stretched it. But the camo mesh, I don't feel like undoing all this to do the camo mesh, but People that have seen my videos before, they, they know what the camo mesh looks like. So, anyway. Uh, and woobies are so lightweight, it probably wouldn't hurt to carry two woobies. You know? And if I remember right, I think I got a Harbor Freight camo blanket that I have added a bunch of tie-outs to, which would be great for this. Anyway. I hear something out there walking. Yeah, whatever. Maybe it's Bigfoot. <laughs> well, I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Get out and enjoy life. Do things like this. Have fun. Tent camp, hammock camp, improvised shelter camp. Do whatever you enjoy in life. Just get out and do it while you're young. All right? Because I have a lot of, I have a lot of older listeners that they say that they live vicariously through my outdoor adventures. That I bring a little of the outdoors to them. Uh, Fine with me. I'm glad. I'm glad I can do it. But like I say, if you're if you're young and healthy and can still get out, get out and enjoy life and have fun. So 
Till then, take it easy, and we shall see you in the next one.